Welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker, and today we're talking to Sherry Brown, who is with Circles of Truth County. And Sherry is in the process of recruiting allies for Circles. And allies are people who are willing to come around and support other people who are trying to come out of poverty. Welcome to the show, Sherry. Thank you. Now tell us, what is Circles and how does it work? Circles is an organization that works with families in generational poverty who want to move to self-sufficiency. And we try to put the knowledge and skills and support systems around them so that they can do that. Okay, so how do you, how do you screen and select people who have decided that they want to do this? We recruit. Um, our best recruiting tool are other people that know people. And um, we, anybody can fill out an application. We do take applications. We do go through an interview process. And what we're looking for, I don't want to look at check stubs or income balances. I'm looking for people who say, I'm tired of just surviving and I want to thrive. I want something better for myself. Oftentimes, I want something better for my children. And um, I'm ready to make changes. And I need somebody to help me do that. And that's the, that's the kind of person we're really looking for. Yes. Um, and once we get them in, we do a 12-week class. And we teach some skills. Um, we do teach some budgeting skills and some management skills and some job skills. But primarily what we talk about is goal setting. And one of the things that you discover when a family lives in poverty, they live in a crisis mode or a survival mode. And so very often they're just dealing with the day after day, what I've got to do today to get by. And when you do that, very often you lose sight of looking long term. And that's a skill that we can teach and um, really encourage. And so we help people do that. And that seems to be a really big key. But I think the best thing that we do is after that 12 weeks, they have to come out of that class with a set of their own goals. We yeah. don't tell people what to do or how to do it. They set their own path. And then um, we put two or three volunteers from the community around them who commit to building a relationship for the next 18 months. And they say, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be on the other end of the phone when you need some encouragement. Um, I'm going to be there when you want to celebrate something. I'm also going to be there when you, when you have a rough time and you don't know what to do next. And I'm just going to be your friend. And you're going to let me know how I can help you reach your goals. And having that support system, I think, in the end, can be one of the biggest tools that can help someone move and change their life. Yes. And so if, I, if there's somebody out there listening today mm -hmm. that's thinking, well, you know, I might could be an ally. Mm -hmm. Talk about what you're looking for in an ally so they can see whether they fit. You know, that's interesting. I get a lot of people who say, I don't know how to get anybody out of poverty. And neither do I. So that's not a prerequisite. Um, everybody's path is different, and we work really hard at matching people. We don't just lump people together. Um, we're right now in the month of February going through. We'll have activities each week at our weekly meetings, um, fun games, get-to-know-you activities, values activities, and people will begin to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. And what we ask for is, are you finding a connection? Is there somebody that you're just particularly drawn to, have something in common with, um, feel like you just connect. Yes. And um, we've done a pretty good job. I'm sure we haven't been 100%, but we've done a really good job of matching people whose personalities and interests um, go together. I mean, I've got one that uh, moved, one of our circle's participants moved out of the housing project into a home and actually bought a home, which yes. was huge. And she had never planted anything because you're not allowed to plant things when you live in the housing project. And she'd never really been in a place where she could do that. She wanted flowers. And one, and I mean, this is simple. It doesn't change your life. But one of her allies, this is what we call our volunteers, one of her allies loves flowers. And so they spent some time just designing a garden. And, how, and she taught her how to plant. So some of the things that you do are just building a relationship. and But then at the same time, we've got people who are retired teachers and maybe one of our participants' children's struggling in a class. And they can say, well, I can, you know, instead of having to pay someone, you can say, well, I'll, I'll help her with her math for a couple of weeks and see what we can do. And um, so, you know, it's just your skills 
can just be encouragement. Um, a lot of times, I think some of the biggest things that people don't realize they have are networks. Middle class people, we, we teach an economic class worldview. Um, middle class people know people. They network. They're good at networking. It's just the way they function. And um, we like to say people in poverty know people who help them get by, but they don't always know people who help them get ahead. Yes. And a lot of times it's, we don't give people jobs, we don't give money, I don't have stuff for people. But um, we know people who are hiring and who are looking for certain people in certain jobs. And we know people at the colleges and at West Georgia Tech. And if you're trying to figure out how to process that, how to get into that, we can connect you with the right people. And sometimes that's just all it takes for somebody. Yes. And uh, also that ally keeps the person on track with their goals. Is that right. right? Well, they both do. Yes. One of the things that we talk about, it's not just... Um, if you are my ally, you're not there to fix me or just to work on me. We're going to have a real relationship. So when you decide you're going to start an exercise plan, I'm going to call you and say, Wanda, are you going to the gym three times a week like you said you wanted to be? Do I need to call you and make sure you get out of bed early in the morning or whatever? And it, it's truly a relationship if it works really well. And I help you and you help me. That's right. And and if I said I was going to go to the gym, you would need to call me. You know? I might. <laughs> you would need to keep yeah. me accountable. I'll count too. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about a few more relationships that circle leaders, those mm -hmm. who are coming the out of poverty, mm -hmm. yes, have with allies, okay. those who are supporting okay. them. Um, you know, I, we've got tons of stories. And uh, my husband actually... Um, I, I told him when I started this a couple of years ago, when I started working here, I said, okay, I've made you look good for about 28 years. You can start making me look good now. So, and, and, he, and he has. He has. He has. <laughs> he, he didn't complain. And, and in some ways, I think um, we've really enjoyed working on this together. And, and I've seen, you know, as much as he's done in his life, I've been so impressed with how he feels like he's grown and learned as well. But one of the things, um, the person, the, the woman, he was matched with a woman and, and they connected. This was a natural match. The first night they met, and it was months before they were actually connected, uh, they just clicked. And, and they both have similar personalities, they're very energetic um, and talkative. Yes. And so anyway, they, they just clicked. And so that was a, a perfect setup. And um, she had been without a job for a couple of years, had some barriers to getting mm -hmm. a job, wanted a job, had some incredible skills and abilities, but couldn't get anywhere. And he really, I think, and this happens a lot, I think he thought, well, this is going to be a no-brainer because she's smart, she's articulate, she's attractive, she's got skills. We're going to make this work. Right. He called everybody he could, and it was a lot harder than he thought. And he really began to see some of the barriers we have in our community even with people who want to work. Um, eventually, um, he kind of twisted the arm of someone he knew and said, you need to interview this person. And the guy, I think he just did it to get Greg off his back. But um, he interviewed her, they hired her part-time, and it was literally two, three weeks. They were trying to figure out how to hire her full-time. And she's been there ever since, been over a year. She's doing very well. They put her through some school and some extra training. They're very you know, she's pleased with them, they're pleased with her, it's been a great match. But it was a real struggle just to get her in the door. Yes. Um, and when you see someone who's capable and wants it and can't get it, it's really frustrating. So I think they both learned a lot. And now she really has a place in the community, right? Absolutely. She um, serves on some of our boards that she's been appointed to some of the community boards and she has really become a voice and an advocate for people who have barriers to moving forward. And those, those look a lot of different ways. Those can be, um, you know, prison background. Um, it can be a lack of education. It can just be sometimes you'll have a chunk of time where you haven't had a job for whatever reason, <clears throat> and that can hurt you. Um, all sorts of things. And so she's really been a strong voice in our community. And she's drugged my husband along, too, and I think they both done well. Yeah, they enjoy each other. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. All right. And I remember that we did something uh, about cardboard testimonies. Yes. And that really shows how the allies 
mm -hmm. learn or mm -hmm. grow during this experience. Mm -hmm. Can you give me just a, a few of those? Sure. Um, you know, I think the thing I hear the most, and, and it sounds kind of trite, but I think it just changes people's viewpoint. Um, they're just not aware of the struggles and how hard people can work and not be able to make it. And um, I hear a lot, I, I had no idea. Um, I also see people who, I, I have a friend who came and, and started um, early and connected with someone. And, and I do want to be realistic. Not everybody flies. Right. Lots of people fly. Lots of people, you just open a door and they are ready to run. Yes. And, and they do it and they do it well. And, and of course that feels really good and we tell those stories. But some people still struggle. Sometimes it's one step forward and three backwards. And so it's not a, it's not a, a hundred percent. I wish it was, but um, I think that there's a sympathy and an understanding that yes, people have to make some decisions in order perhaps to change their life. At the same time, our community sometimes throws up a lot of roadblocks. Yes. And I think a lot of people don't want to realize, they, they don't want to look at that, they don't realize that. And uh, I have a friend who's been in it and she said, you know, I have to tell you, my heart breaks for something that I never even knew existed before I started Circles. And she said, I should have known. And then my heart kind of breaks for that too. But she said, there's issues that I never even knew were issues and now I see it and I have, I have, I feel like I have a voice for it. Yes. And so um, that's exciting when we have people who can say, "Wait a minute, you know, let's let's look at something a little different. Let's see if our policy or or the way we do things at our work or the way we do things at our church ministry, maybe we can make it a little easier." Um, one of the things that um, several of our folks, you know, many of our people, we're not a faith-based organization, but many of our people come to us because of their faith. And um, they're involved in other ministries. And it's been interesting. A frustration is that as my folks go to work and um, make more income, they do lose the food stamps. They lose the um, housing assistance. Most of the time, they'll lose their child care assistance. And they, they lose more assistance than they're actually making. And so it becomes, it's a real tightrope for a while. Yes. And um, we try to help them. Now, like I said, we don't give things, we don't have things, but we try to connect them with resources in the community to where they can get a little break from, you know, maybe a food box from a ministry. But once you go to work, those things are very hard to get to because they're, you know, Tuesday from 10 to 12 or Thursday from 1 to 3 or, or whatever, and that's when they're working. And if they can't go, they can't access some of these ministries. And so I think some of our church folks have realized, wait a minute, we might need to rethink how we do this if we really want to be able to help people who are trying to help themselves. And, and instead of just making it convenient for us, maybe we need to make it convenient for them. For the people who are using mm -hmm. it, yes. Exactly. And so I'm, I'm seeing some of those changes and it's really exciting for everybody, yes. our entire community. Yes, and one thing that I became aware of was like lending companies and mm -hmm. how it's it's almost like you can get trapped in there and, and not be able to come mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of issues mm -hmm. that we need to address as a community. It, it, it has surprised me and I think it surprises a lot of people when you start realizing how expensive it is to be poor. Yes. Um, resources, just, you know, going to the laundromat, I mean, I have a washer and dryer. Yes, a washer and dryer costs a lot of money, which I invest in about once every 15 or 20 years, and then I have it. Um, if you have, if you don't have a washer and dryer, which most of my folks don't, that means you have to pile up your kids, go to the laundromat, have to find the transportation, whether you have it or not, haul all your junk there, which just sounds awful. It's four dollars and fifty cents for a load of laundry. Yes, um, it's a lot of money and a lot of time. And they're really spending more on their laundry over a long period of time than I do. Yes. And, and so something even like that, um, the fact that we talk a lot about how um, there's so many things that are accessible to people who have better transportation. But if you don't, you're going to be shopping at a convenience store paying five, six, eight times more than what I'm paying at the grocery store, maybe with a coupon on my phone or whatever, because I can access those. And those aren't always accessible to yes. my families. And, you know, it's really heartbreaking to save your money and finally be able to buy a car 
and then have a crisis come mm -hmm. and have to borrow mm -hmm. and maybe use the title mm -hmm. and lose that car mm -hmm. that's taken you so long to gain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's just a lot of things that um, maybe like if we have a crisis, sometimes maybe we could just put a little on the credit card, pay it off the next right. month. Right. But when you don't have that mm -hmm. cushion or that mm -hmm. um, convenience, then mm -hmm. it's crisis. And, yeah. and, and it's, I do hear a lot of people who will say, well, you just need to teach people not to do that. And I, I understand yes. in a perfect world, we wouldn't need that. Um, but it what happens is and again going back to you know people who help you get by but now I have people you help get ahead you know I have a daughter in graduate school who had a little financial crisis she calls home we're able to give her two hundred dollars right. or whatever to get her through um, she has that support system when you live in poverty and your support system is just as poor as you are and your car breaks down and you need two hundred dollars you don't have it and you don't have anybody who can help you with it you don't have the credit card you're not eligible for the credit card for whatever reason and so your only option is either to not go to work because cabs are extremely expensive and unreliable or whatever and so you end up that's your only option that's your only financial option and so um, we're trying in circles we do have some ways we do have our own loan program it's only for people in circles that are working that have been in it at least six months and are working on their goals and uh, you know we can kind of avoid that a little bit but that's just a drop in the bucket so some of those things need to be addressed as a community as well yes and uh, Sherry talking about allies I know you are the director of circles so it means that really you have supported every person so far that's come through circles and you've watched their growth, you've watched their development. Tell us what it's, I, I'm going to say you're a super ally. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell us what it's been like for you mm -hmm. to see everybody that's come through and support them and just your experience in that. It's rewarding, it's heartbreaking, it's um, frustrating and the best thing ever. Um, it's everything because when you build relationships, and I do have a glimpse into everybody, um, and when you build those relationships and you see the struggle and the ability, but then you see the barriers, it's just, you know, sometimes you're so incredibly impressed with the strength and the creativity and the determination of these people. At the same time, you just want to shake your fist at the things that pop up and and knock them down, but they still get up. They do, and and it's humbling. And um, I'm honored to to just be a little piece of it. Yes, and and to pull it together. Um, and and I and I have to add this too. We're not just about the parents. We're also about the kids. Yes, and. You know, I'm ready to adopt five or six of them and, you know, <laughs> be their grandma or something. But um, I, we have one of our Circles children, uh, one of our families that came in, and um, one of our best partners is Boys and Girls Club. Because when our moms go back to work, they usually don't have the ability, especially their school-age children, to provide aftercare because it is expensive. And so Boys and Girls Club is an affordable, safe, and very good place for their kids to be. Um, there's all sorts of opportunities for their children. And so we, when they go back to work and they need that, we try to plug those kids in with Boys and Girls Club. And um, they've been great with us. But we had one family of three children, and they were older. I think the youngest was in third or fourth grade. And the oldest, I believe, was in high school when she started. And um, they've both been there for two years, and they're just thriving. One of them um, has just finished a year as Youth of the Year. Yes. And I just, I just look at her, and and I met her, and I don't know that people realize this, but she wouldn't even look me in the eye when I met her. This was a teenager. She couldn't shake my hand, and now she stands up in front of people, and she still gets nervous, and probably still talks a little too fast, but she gives speeches in front of two and three hundred people and I just want to bust yeah because but, it's 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 a whole family change and I look at what mm -hmm. these children um, what their opportunities are and and she's actually you know 
between circles and some of our training and between Boys and Girls Club, she's learned how to dress and how to talk and how to apply for a job and she just went out and did it. And now she's got a job and um, making plans for college and I see that and I consider that as much a success as, as mom. Yes, and her mm -hmm. future is bright. Absolutely. Yes, now tell me why it is so important that the community support circles. Um, because it's a community issue. You know, 23% of our population lives in poverty and that affects everybody. We want to think it doesn't and, and we want to pretend, I think sometimes it just makes us feel better if we just don't look at it. Um, but it affects our schools, mm -hmm. it affects our businesses, it affects our economic development, it affects our housing, it affects everything. And even more than all of that, these are human beings and they're our community. There are people. Yes. And we need to be a part of making this a better place for everybody. Um, I think the saddest and most heartbreaking thing in the world is somebody who's capable and wants something and doesn't have the connections to make it happen. Yes. And I see that every day. Yes. Now, uh, you've just recently done a poverty simulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and tell us about that. You followed that mm -hmm. up with the Bridges Out of Poverty train. Tell us how that, all that went. Okay, um, it went great. Good. <laughs> it, it's, it's fun and it's a little overwhelming for people. Mm -hmm. um, we decided as an organization, Circles, um, two years ago, we got some grant money, we invested, it's, it's about a $2,000 kit that we purchased and we invested in to be able to do these poverty simulations. It is a large scale simulation. It takes about two and a half to three hours. Uh, it also takes 15 volunteers and about 30 hours of volunteer work, putting it all back together when we're done. So it's, it's a big project for us to undertake. Um, we don't make money. It does cost us money. So we do ask for a little bit of reimbursement, but we don't make money on this. And it's something that we do to help people understand what life in poverty is. Um, People who participate in it are given a role. They get a name tag and they play a role and we put them in family systems. And it's very realistic. The Missouri Community Action Group actually created this in conjunction with families who had lived in generational poverty. So it's very accurate. Um, you have to navigate a month. You have four 15 minute segments and that you live in your family system and you have to pay your rent and go to work or go to school, um, go to the store and get your food and you have to navigate what you have and what your resources are and how you're gonna get there um, and how you're gonna do it. And if you don't have a job, you can apply for a job and um, you really get to see the stressors, the um, a typical life. And of course it's a simulation, but it's a pretty accurate simulation. And the conversation that we have after, the debriefing of course, is extremely important. Um, walking through, uh, one of the questions I love to ask when they all get done, I'm like, all of you who played parents, how many times did you ask your kids how school was? How many times did you check their homework? And I mean, yesterday I had teachers in there and they went, oh, <laughs> not once. Yes. Because they realized that the stress of trying to make everything come together, those things just fall to the bottom. And I think we're a little less judgmental, a little more understanding, and probably a little more helpful to people when we've kind of had a, an hour-long feel and, and dive into life, a little bit of life. Yes, and in one of those poverty simulations, it was very interesting. It was a group of teachers and, mm -hmm. and people who want to be teachers. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I noticed in there, that there, there was a lot of crime activity <laughs> that yeah, they were kind service, of criminal. <laughs> they were. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, I, I worked um, at the Interfaith mm -hmm. Council, Table, yeah, yeah. and I had my money stolen twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the people who stole my money, I mean, it just really, um, he was hurt by what he had done, <laughs> you know, and yeah. he, he just felt that, that that money would help him, and so I had left my table, and he grabbed my money. Mm -hmm. uh, but they had a real discussion about how desperate you get in those mm -hmm. situations mm -hmm. and how you might step into crime when you ordinarily wouldn't do mm -hmm. that. And so I, for me, I thought that was very mm -hmm. um, interesting yeah. and very... Um, 
surprising even mm -hmm. to the people who who actually resorted to some crime. Mm -hmm. And then um, in the one that you did yesterday, there were some people who kind of stepped into crime without realizing they were stepping mm -hmm. into crime. Mm -hmm. And so um, they were taken aback because they had trusted somebody that it was a, a good transaction, financial transaction. They were just going to carry something to somebody else. And it turned out that that what they carried had been drugs and mm -hmm. so they were arrested mm -hmm. and and sometimes that happens mm -hmm. even you know in the youth population and those kinds of things so there mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that surface during those simulations mm -hmm. now uh, I want you to tell me about um, how you feel that your life your experiences and all the things that you've done in your life have prepared you for circles. Uh, you had made that statement to me before that, that your life just came together to do this. Tell me about that. Well, it, it was a good time for me. Um, I actually was a reporter for many, many years here and for some other organizations. And um, one of the things that I realized all the people I met, so many of them I wrote about, and I had so much knowledge of the community because of working at the newspaper that has really benefited everybody. Yes. Um, just being able to pick up those phones and call people that I know. Yes. And say, and, and if they don't know what to do, they know who does know what to do. And I realize that networking is probably one of the strongest things that we can do. And um, I've always done that because of just where I've been and what I've done. But now I realize the real advantage to having that ability to do that, just just to have those connections with people. Um, I think, too, um, understanding people, you know, the, just um, the work I've done, the way I've lived in different parts of the country. I've, um, you know, I, lo I loved being a reporter. I kind of miss it because being a reporter, you get to find out anything you want to. Yes. Um, if you're curious about some, about something, you just call up the expert and ask them all your questions. And uh, I've learned how to do that. I've learned, I'll ask anybody anything. And I don't have a problem with that. And uh, that's really helpful, too. Yes. So it's, it's all come together, and I really, I really enjoyed it. Yes. And you make an excellent director. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I just want to encourage those of you who are listening, whether you're retired like me and you're looking for something that can be meaningful and, and impactful in the community, to consider becoming an ally. Uh, I have been an ally for two years and I have really enjoyed the experience. And my cardboard message was that I went to uh, be a friend and I made a friend. And so it's, it's really an enriching experience and I encourage you to look into the possibility of becoming an ally. And remember, you can do it because there's greatness in you. Thank you for watching You Make the Difference because you truly do. Heaven.